Hello, friends. This is Pastor Patrick coming to you from my virtual home office uh, that has been set up here in my bedroom uh, because, of course, times have changed. Things are difficult. It's ever changing right now. Uh, so we are all doing the best that we can. Uh, but I wanted to come to you today. I recognize that my backdrop kind of makes me look like I'm in a Matrix movie scene. Uh, some of you will understand that reference. Some of you will not, but that's okay because again, we're all doing the best we can during these difficult times. So I wanted to come to you from Proverbs chapter one, verse seven, and that is going to tell us that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge or the fear of Yahweh is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Fools despise wisdom and instruction. So this is chapter 1, verse 7. And a question you might have is, well, why Proverbs? Why is it coming to us with that today? Well, here is why. Because I want to begin today a walk through Proverbs together. Uh, we will do this over the next days, weeks, perhaps months. Because I want us to look at what is a very unique Old Testament book. And it's a very unique collection of, of sayings and thoughts. And it's unique to the whole biblical canon, not just the Old Testament. But here is my hopes. When we look at chapter 1, verse 7, this is kind of the motto or theme of the entire book. And it's uh, talking about how the fear of Yahweh leads to what is called biblical wisdom, what God thinks is wisdom. And the book is full of very practical, very real advice in the real world. So here is my hope for you and for me, that during this very unique and difficult time, as lives have been kind of put on hold for many of us, things are not as they were, I am hoping that as we kind of step back from what was our normal, we can reevaluate our lives based on what biblical wisdom is, how God presents his views of what is wise. And my hope is that during this unique time, if we can walk this path together, that when we come back in the appropriate time to whatever the new normal is, and as we start to kind of uh, restart the normal part of our lives, God willing, that we can fall back on this time, this unique time, this study, and apply that to whatever our new normal is. That during this time, we can use it to our benefit and our sanctification, our spiritual growth, our spiritual health, and apply these lessons from a unique time into whatever will be our new normal. So again, when life gets back to whatever it's going to look like after this situation, we will have had this time together of biblical wisdom and biblical study to apply to our new life. So that's my hope and prayer. So we'll walk through some of Proverbs. We will not do every verse. We may not even do every chapter, but we're going to walk together and see what God would teach us about this. So uh, I think one of the first questions we have to address is, what does this passage mean by the fear of the Lord or the fear of Yahweh? So scholars have debated this for many, many centuries, for a very long time. Uh, there's been no consensus uh, except, uh, well, there's one consensus. I'll give it to you in a second. But there's been a wide spectrum of opinions, everything from a healthy reverence and awe for Yahweh God, all the way to utter terror of God. Uh, in the whole gamut, in between, that's kind of where scholars have landed, this whole wide spectrum. So uh, what, what do we mean when we say this, this utter terror? I mean, how does that fit into our relationship with God? And, and it, that's one I just want to talk about for a moment, because I think that it's one that tends to get downplayed when you hear this passage taught or preached. We tend to shy away from this idea of really being this terror of the Lord, because it doesn't fit with our knowledge that God has shown us about himself, his character, being loving, being our eternal father. So how can we in love, knowing we are loved by God, how can we have this fear and terror of the Lord? And I think it's this way. So if you look at Isaiah chapter 6, and it's one of my favorite passages, Isaiah gets a vision of Yahweh God on his throne. And I, Isaiah's immediate reaction to this is, one of, I think, fairly stated, utter terror. And he shouts out, he tells us, woe to me, I am a man of unclean lips. And that's his reaction to seeing Yahweh God. And I think that the reason 
in the scriptures, in Isaiah's case, when we come face to face with God Almighty, we understand clearly how wide and deep the gulf is, the chasm is, between us as sinful humanity and a perfect, eternal God. There is a wide chasm between us, friends. And I think in those moments, we are hit to our very core with how badly we fall short of what we should be to be around and to be in the presence of a holy God. And that's what Isaiah does. He just reacts with utter fear. And it should tell us something that every time, not even just God or not even just Jesus Christ, but every time that even an angel comes into the biblical scriptures to bring a message to me, what does he say to Mary right there in the Christmas narratives that we hear every year? Don't be afraid, Mary. I bring you good tidings, good news. I mean, that's what the angels are always saying. Why? Because they're always picking people up off the ground as they hit to their knees when the angels show up. And that's an angel, not even God himself. So I think there is some uh, support, there is some theological justification for this sense that we see in the scriptures of utter terror when we come face to face with God. And I don't think that that's unbiblical or unbiblical reaction because we recognize that it's more about our character in our lack than it is being afraid of God. We are fearful because we recognize how far short we come uh, to what we should be to be in the presence of God. And one of the commentaries that I read uh, to get ready for this study as we embark here today uh, reminded me of a little bit of a story from C.S. Lewis's The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. That's the first uh, book of the Chronicles of Narnia. Now, if you're around me any at all, you know that I'm always happy to drop a C.S. Lewis quote. Uh, he's one of my favorite authors. And in this book, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, there are four children, brothers and sisters, who get to go from their world, uh, our world in England, uh, into the world of Narnia. And they meet Mr. and Mrs. Beaver, who are going to take them to Aslan, the great lion, who is the Jesus character in the books. And, of course, the natural reaction for any human being who's going to meet a lion is, well, is he safe? Uh, and the beavers say something really incredible about this Jesus character who is a lion in the books. They say, uh, safe? No. He's not safe, but he's good. And that's a tremendous statement, I think, about God. Is he safe? No, he's not safe, but he's good. And I'm not really talking about persecution. I'm talking about us as Christians having a peaceful, easy, calm we know what's happening. We know what's going on. We know what to expect. A safe, easy, calm life. And friends, that's not what we signed up for when we became Christians. And I'm not talking just about persecution because that happens. But uh, it happens all around the world. But I'm talking about the safe, easy, narrow, uh, I guess, Flat road would be the right way to put it. The flat, easy path of life where things never get out of whack. They never veer off. They're always the expected and comfortable. And there's nothing comfortable, friends, about being a Christian. And here's what I mean by that. When you agreed to start this journey with Jesus Christ, and it's the greatest journey you will ever be on, you agreed that you would allow God to reshape you, to remake you, to have you become the child he called you to be. And the amazing thing about God is that it seems to me whenever he gets one part of my character straightened out and he leads me through the things I have to go through to get that character piece to look more like God, he immediately seems to shift gears and then start on this piece of my character and this part of who I am. And it's like, Lord, no, I just got done with this piece, and now you're already moving on to that. And God says, that's right, because I am busy remaking you into the child I called you to be. And it will not be safe. It will not be comfortable. It will not always be a flat, easy road. It will not always be the expected. But because I am good, you can trust the outcome. You can trust where I am leading you, even when it doesn't feel safe, because I am God, your loving Father. And I will walk with you down this path. But safe isn't the right word. 
but he is good. So I think this fear of Yahweh, perhaps we do too much to diminish this concept of being truly uh, in uh, just uh, in terror or, or in fear of who we are in the face of God. And then he continues to work on our character and leads us to areas that we consider unsafe because he's making us in who he called us to be. So I think that's part of uh, the explanation of that. But at the end of the day, all scholars seem to agree that whatever this fear of Yahweh, wherever you want to end up on that spectrum, ultimately what it certainly means, and it means no less than a dependent relationship upon God. So biblical wisdom is understanding in the fear of the Lord that we are in a dependent relationship upon God. Every breath, every heartbeat, every event, everything in our lives, even a virus, even the difficulties, the unsafe times in our life when God is working on our character, we are dependent, utterly dependent upon him, and we're in that relationship with him. So, friends, uh, certainly in times like this, when we are completely out of our comfort zone and we have no idea where this road is leading. Uh, we are very much shown, it's very, we're very aware that we are dependent upon God and upon God alone. And the biblical witness here in Proverbs is that at that place, in that place of dependent relationship, we can begin the journey of biblical wisdom. Recognizing we are not in control, we are dependent upon God, we can begin correctly the journey of learning biblical wisdom. One commentator uh, said, and I'll quoted this for you, is that in a sense, it's that if you get the first thought right, if you get the first thought of a dependent relationship upon God as the basis for our wisdom and our understanding and living rightly, if we get that first thought right, then all of the other thoughts that we have fall into place. Get the first right, we will get the rest right, or certainly we have a more likelihood to get those right. So the fear of the Lord, friends, recognizing that we are dependent upon God, recognizing that everything is in his hands, is the beginning of being able to perceive and understand our life correctly from God's point of view and biblical wisdom. To be wise biblically means to recognize that we are in a dependent relationship with God. We as the creature are not the creator, but the creator has given us guidelines, has given us thoughts, has given us wise ways to live out our life so that we can be uh, healthy, happy, blessed by God, walking in healthy and spiritually strong relationship with him that will ultimately, through Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone, lead us to heaven, to where we will see God as he truly is and not have to be in any type of terror because the blood of Jesus Christ has washed away our sins completely. So come on back over the next few days, few weeks, few months, uh, as we continue to walk through Proverbs. But friends, it's always important before a journey that you get started off on the right foot. So today we start off on the right foot, remembering and looking at and pondering on the simple fact that biblical wisdom begins with understanding that God is God and we are not. So I pray that you will be safe. I pray that God will bless you during this time in ways that you could never have imagined, that he will open up your eyes to see what he is doing in ways that we could never have expected, and that he will keep you and your loved ones safe. God bless you, and we will talk to you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.